say is expert, but not officially secret. Uh, many people may not know these things, but they are not secret. In that sense. We're now on the verge of what must be called World War III. This will be thermonuclear World War III. Not pre-nuclear war, not nuclear war, but thermonuclear. The targets, principally, are Russia and China. These are the two principal targets. The war is intended to start, as of now, with an operation coming out of Iran. And it will probably be set up in some form. This war in Iran is, targeting Iran, is supposed to bring Israel into play. That may or may not happen, but that is the option with which this war plan started. The issue is as follows. The present world system, economic system, is in a process of disintegrating. Exactly how that will occur is uncertain, but it is happening. The intention is to eliminate two nations, Russia and, and China. And this means nuclear weapons, it means thermonuclear weapons. That part is engaged. Once the war starts, probably with an incident orchestrated in Iran, or against Iran, or something of that sort, then Israel will come into play as starting the, the heavy fire, but on a limited way. way. The is Israel coming into the fire will trigger a setup of thermonuclear World War III, in which the intended targets include Russia and China. Now, at this point, the United States, nations of Europe, Russia, China, and other countries are poised for exactly this war. The background of the war is the fact that the entire world is going bankrupt, especially the transatlantic region, especially Europe, and also the United States and the nations of South America and elsewhere as well. Tonight we begin a new recurring series on World Focus that we call the Chinese Century, a series meant to explore that country's vast and growing influence around the world. A story published in today's Washington Post speaks to China's rapidly growing clout. It said that China has now surpassed Japan as the U.S. government's largest creditor, owning at least 10 percent of all U.S. debt, perhaps as much as 700 billion dollars. That potentially gives the Chinese tremendous leverage over the United States. No question that the United States uh, was subjected to Chinese espionage. The most serious uh, counterintelligence failures. No other country has succeeded in stealing so much from the United States. This is a plot and a supposed conspiracy that on the face of it has just about everything. Communist China, in theory, stealing virtually the entire menu of the U.S. nuclear arsenal compromising the Allies' nuclear weapons across the globe, including Britain's strife of submarines. The People's Liberation Army in Beijing again, in theory, close to deploying now a nuclear missile whose design draws on stolen American secrets. And of President Bill Clinton, who seemed to take his eye off the proverbial because he wanted to encourage trade with China, so selling them incredibly delicate technology like supercomputers and satellite systems, then receiving in return, wait for this, campaign contributions American companies doing business with China. Indeed, there was money, it seems, from the Chinese government itself. The People's Republic of China has stolen classified information on every currently deployed warhead in the U.S. ballistic missile arsenal. The PRC has also stolen information on the neutron bomb, which the United States has not yet deployed. All right, let's start with the big issue in the 212 presidential race, jobs. Why haven't jobs come back as fast as many people thought they should? Because they're going to China. China is taking our jobs, they're making our product, and we have to do something about it, and we have to do something about it quickly. They are decimating our country just as OPEC is decimating oil prices. 
But how can you compete with Chinese labor, which is much, much less uh, than unionized American labor? I mean, what are you going to make a law that says you can't, American companies can't manufacture in China? You're going to make a law? By getting China not to manipulate their currency, it's very tough for our companies to compete with Chinese countries, companies because, very simply, they manipulate their currency. And when you manipulate a currency like they do, they're professionals. They're going to make a $300 billion, let's call it profit, this year on the United States. $300 billion. And more importantly, not only $300 billion, they're taking our jobs. We have to do something about China. We have to do something about OPEC. We cannot have oil at $105, which is going to go to $150 very soon. We have nobody to speak to these guys. They wouldn't be there except for us. They wouldn't be there. I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year to slay the third part of them. And the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand, and I heard the number of them. Thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed.